Welcome to another episode of The Other Russian. So today I'm going to talk about a project of mine that I've mentioned before. It's called Shtri Shakti. You may remember it from the previous episode, but just to quickly remind you, for those who just tuned in, this is the project and this is the basic overview of it. Of what we're gonna do, it's very abstract at some point in time because uh, we finalized in the end of June. However, this is not the case. Today, I want to talk to you about people. So, there was an interesting insight that came to my mind recently about the uh, double faced nature of human beings, and I'm not talking about those phrases like those people in the Western world are double faced and there's hypocrisy here and there because this is the sentiment that's being fed that has been fed to russians for the course of i don't know last 20 years or so so there is this bad west that is you know demonizing you and um i lost my thought but anyway so there was this project yeah so we are working this project people yeah the sentiment so basically the idea here is that it is not this western world if you put it this way this is the nature of humankind so i got uh my i don't know whether it's my fear or not maybe somebody said it already (laughs) as a friend of mine said um every thought that is possible to happen humankind already happened in India inside the mind of one of the uh, presidents of India well if you take into consideration that it's more than a billion and a half I think he's pretty much right but anyway that's not the point so there is this society and uh, there is this territory and there are old standards governed by man to build this patriarchal society whereas on the other hand this is the uh, place of birth of buddhism and buddha in the first place so he appeared in india like, i'm gonna send the link in the notes and then put exactly where was he born but the idea here is that there is this buddhism there is this no clinging there is this no desire and everything and there is this limitation and taboo in terms of sex and women menstruation like how the fuck is this possible it is because my point exactly this is the double-faced nature of humankind as a species and we're as human beings so we're we're pretty much exactly the same in terms of how our brain works and i'm gonna make a remark about new nielsen neuro here and if i forget please remind me i'll get back to it so the idea here is that a human brain works exactly the same across the entire population the humankind and um, um it is normal in a sense that you can meet this double face nature of human beings um, across the world in different variations or combinations so for us being myself russian i was told that you know this bad west this double face uh, double standards and hypocrisy but then again you drill down to a narrow problem of the society that it has well through particular project of course i'm talking about through the lens of shtri shakti so you think that there are things that very touchy which you can't really discuss in public because it, something may happen so there's this religion aspect and this division within this religion aspect in india deep rooted there is this cultural aspect there are um, uh, like values like strong values of the society like family uh this is like value number one or number two pretty much the second would be um Shit, I think I mentioned before, so let me let me quickly go through that. So there were boundaries, individualism. Yeah, I've written it down going through the notes with the NGO, with the shark NGO that I met recently. Ah, uh, yeah, there it is. So respecting elders, number one. Second, welcoming and family. You might say family is number two. Welcoming is probably number three. Tolerance and trust. So if you think about it, like this way so this is the cultural aspect and forget about the remark about buddha and everything right so this is this is this 
and Buddhism is not even the type of religion that was involved in the first part. However, here we have this cultural aspect, and then we have this taboo, which, uh, you know, basically made by men, and men dictate that uh, women are not allowed to discuss periods out in the open or menstruation, because it triggers their male ego. And this is something so deep-rooted, it runs by millennia, so basically the origin of this ego in men is close to being on the DNA level, in a sense. And, uh, I mean, it's an assumption, I may be wrong here completely, but then again, it is so deep-rooted in the genes memory, let's put it this way, so this, this patriarchal society for thousands of years, and then all of a sudden, this entirely different substance comes into place. Oh, activity, how LinkedIn calls it, right? Activity, now women, activity, shit. By the way, details in the previous episode, I showed it. So, what I was talking about is that this is the nature of humankind and it doesn't matter uh, whether you want it or not you just need to accept it and deal with it uh, but yeah mainly accept it because again what happens when people don't get an understanding they get into conflict so in order to get into conflict it is extremely important to understand the perspective of the other side through dialogue so there's this phrase uh, uh, in the choral, um, yeah, whatever, just I'll put it in the notes in English. There are some phrases that hardly can be translated into English, at least to, not to the best of my knowledge. So, what I want to talk about is the person, so human being, and uh, humans in general, uh, but specifically one particular individual. So, she's been extremely helpful to us. Um, and, and, as you know, if you remember, like us doing this project and um, Sri Shakti so this is all about it and you see that you know there's been a lot of research here so you know this is just marketing those are other aspects those are some ideas here and there but we've, we've been progressing thus far only due to like several individuals involved in this project because since the very beginning when this project appeared inside my brain at some point in time I then just went on doing it like you know see the goal don't see obstacles pretty much so I'm a stubborn person I mean at some point in time back in 2003 was it no 7 2007 so I have this very rare immune disease called bacterial disease or ankylosis arthritis or something like that and um, at some point I was paralyzed for almost a month I just couldn't walk simply because uh, once I changed position of my leg I faced like extreme pain so just to give you an understanding how painful it was I once went to the bath ah, why not what how could it happen with arthritis in a bath right and then I finished bathing and I couldn't stand up for like 30 minutes because of pain, the massive pain that paralyzed me, but eventually I got out and, you know, went on with my life. But uh, this is the quality that I possess. I'm, I'm a stubborn person, so this level of stubbornness is just across my um, personality. So for this particular project, I said, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm just, I don't give a shit, I'm gonna do it. Like, who's with me? And uh, several people responded, well, um, even though I'm strongly involved with Fanatic and uh, everything that they do, I didn't put it as a project as a must for the entire team. So I kind of pitched it and people started to um, kind of help and get uh, gather, gather information and do the research. And then my wife joined, uh, for, for which I thank her a lot. And actually, she is the sole inspiration for me to uh, even start the, these podcasts as well, but also like everything that I do, she's definitely my muse. And uh, for that, I want to say thank you, Nastinka. <laughs> but I love yet a bit of them. The thing here is that um, she inspired me to move this forward and further than just uh, an idea to make a long-lasting impact because she's a feminist and uh, at some point in time I realized that I'm a feminist too. I, I mean, I'm calling myself, but I mean, you can throw tomatoes or potatoes at me, but I don't give a shit. Anyway, um, 
So the, the thing is that um, she said that she wants to be involved. And I said, let's do it. Uh, so she was the one developed, uh, who developed this beautiful presentation here. Oh, sorry, not this one. This one. So this is her doings. She works as a product designer at a NordVPN. <laughs> In case you want to hire her. No, just kidding. Uh, so let's go back with all the us. Yeah, uh, we'll no, this is sorry, just different. Yeah, I'll get back to that. So, ooh, nice shot. <laughs> No, like there you go. Oh, nice. That's better. So, um, what I was talking is that throughout this through development of this project, and uh, I had a meeting with NGOs and a meeting with one today in two hours. I'm also meeting business. I mentioned I met our plane yesterday, so they've expressed their interest. Well, we'll see. I mean, interest is not a deal, right? Being the commercial person that I am. But this is, again, we're not making any money out of it. We're just showing off with our expertise and knowledge and uh, what we can do as business. Um, that is, nowadays, sorry, the dude just bumped with his elbow to my second screen and they're connected. So, um, what I was saying, shit, lost my train of thought. Anyway, going back to that, um, to the to the people uh, being instrumental so um, I wanted to say thank you to a few people that really put a lot of effort and time in making this happen because this is the level of ambition that I've never even dreamed of and I've never even thought that I could try and pull something off like this but so far it's just pretty much aligning and I've been discussing it with my uh, friend a colleague of mine from Nielsen just earlier today we had a call so she's been working in the corporate world in Nielsen then she went to Mars and then she went on to work for her and basically help people because she's a, a, what, a diploma psychologist with how, how you call it so anyway she's got a diploma and she's a psychologist so she, she has her own practice so I had a really neat conversation with her and uh, there, then and there, I said this phrase that this is just one species. That's who we are. And if you notice, the name of the channel <laughs> is exactly the same. So the reason being it the same is that I've recently registered a legal entity in Cyprus and I call it one species of limited it's, you know. but I mean being a Russian nowadays I faced multiple barriers on that journey I'm still figuring it out with banks but the banks are asking like what is this legal entity gonna be used for and I'm like well you know there's fanatic <laughs> There's uh, this other business that I do, well, I can show it to you at some point. There's this business that I do, that I'm going to show you in some moment. There are these investments that I'm planning to do, and these are that I'm doing, and I'm going to show it to you in some, at some point in time. And they're like, just not too risky. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Okay, okay, risky, let's see. So. We are marketing consultancy, not just because there is reason to believe behind that. And there is a certain reason why we're called fanatic, because it seems that it kind of brings on board people who are this dedicated to a cause, <laughs> in a sense. So, yeah, going back to the, the human being, so I wanted to thank uh, one particular human being. And I'm gonna definitely make a mistake and pronounce incorrectly her surname. So I'm just gonna go and say Kushi. And if I'm being wrong, I ask you, Kushi, please tell to me. Um, yeah, there she is. And uh, she's been absolutely instrumental in making this project happen. So I'm really, I'm just simply impressed like with 
with what she's doing. Because this level of dedication, this level of readiness to do what others just discuss is just insane. So let me give you a bit of her background here. Oh, I was there all the time, right? So th that's her, 23 years old, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, that's info about her. This is what she does. So she is um, a sex educator, pretty much. Or nowadays, I guess you can call it men and women's health education. Because this is what it is, really. It's not global warming. <laughs> it is global climate change, pretty much. So this is what she's doing. She's helping people to become better versions of themselves. She teaches people of young age on what consent is, what is individualism, what does word boundaries mean for representatives of just humankind, one species, irregardless of the gender, is just being this transparent. It is just being this open, willing to make this positive impact and change happen. And I'm deeply impressed with her. I mean, you can go through her profile and just, just look at this, you know, I mean, like seriously, seriously. And the reason I got in touch with her in the first place is that, um, hmm. shit, I've been showing a different screen, right? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, well, up and smoke. So yeah, just quickly go through, um, you've heard what I've said, just, you know, take this into consideration and take your time and go through everything that she's already accomplished, everything that she already did, the level of greatness, the level of steps taken towards the progress of the entire humankind, this level of dedication is insane. Um, the reason we got connected with her in the first place is simply because she is a student of uh, Dr. Nandini Dar, who is basically happens to be a significant other of my dear friend Raghavendra. And this level of kind of universe connectedness in that sense, when you're trying to do something good is insane because just to give you a bit of a flavor so i'm not sure if i shared this story before so how i met ragavendra <laughs> this this is a great story in my view but let's see how it goes so you remember i, I came to india for the first time in 2012 and uh, in 2012 it was my first time that i went to india it's the first ever in my life so if you remember correctly my first foreign trip was in 2006 2012 by that i've seen cyprus by then i've seen uh, yeah i've been to ukraine i've been to kiev i wanted to go back there one day but with my passports not happening anytime soon i, I really love kiev it's a beautiful city and it's a, such a fucking shame that this war happened it's just Anyway, um, so I've seen some European locations. I've been to Eurotour, I've been to Germany. I went on the Eurotour for three weeks. Oh, I got another story to tell sometime. So then um, I've never been to Asia before and I um, used couch surfing back in the day. I didn't have any money to travel. I didn't have much. So I used couch surfing and on couch surfing, I, I happened to stay a couple of times or maybe once with this interesting woman in Germany and in that experience I'll never forget. She said when I was in the toilet uh, not to, you know, to make pee pee properly. 
<laughs> not to make any drops, but yeah, okay, she said it, fine. I accepted it. Nevertheless, uh, point here. So I found this bag in Kauri Surfing, and the reason I found him is that basically he is just um, very, he had like very interesting music taste, like really interesting. And I, I can call myself a music whore because I've listened to 2,500 different artists throughout 2022, according to Spotify which you use. <laughs> Thank you guys for the Spotify. Uh, I did. I'm, I'm, up, I'm up for an ad, by the way. I mean, if you come here and pay me money, I'm gonna talk more about you. But so far, that's it. That's it. Not gonna, not gonna tell about it anyway. So I have this very different music taste. So those music tastes are varying from, you know, classical, pop, electric, well, electronic is stands separately. I'm gonna send you Shkur's music guide because it's very different. Uh, it's like entirely different world. <laughs> but uh, there are other genres, right? So there's folk, there's hip hop, rap, uh, electronic society, folk, country, jazz, blues, uh, pop. Hell, why not? I mean, Michael Jackson, Britney Spears. They used to listen to them a lot in '90s. Um, Spice Girls. I mean, 1997, when MTV came to Russia, fuck, my world just went upside down. I saw Limbisky, I was like, fuck. I bought the first audio cassettes, Limbisky and Korn, just because MTV came up. <laughs> and then I went there and uh, went for Michael Jackson and Titanic, those were my two CDs that I purchased at the time. So anyway, back back to the <laughs> mainer script. So. You, you got a feeling, right, of the taste that they have in my mind. And I found this guy, and this, he has, like, very diverse music connection, um, interests. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> we'll have a lot to talk about. So what I'm doing is that, basically, I write him and say he's pretty much exactly the same. I think I can find it on Couchsurfing and still use it this profile, probably. And um, so we meet accidentally, and I almost went further. Because he gave me an address, and um, he said that you can stay there. And like, yeah, sure. So I arrived from Kanpur, all this, you know, envisioned and enlightened after day, then days of vipassana, and then I arrived to to Delhi, uh, to Noida, and I'm not sure where I am. So I navigate somehow. I find find this place, and I get to an apartment. I find the keys. I get inside, and it's empty. I mean, there's there's refrigerator disconnected from the fridge, uh, the sockets. There's some you know furniture things. It looks more like an office than a residential unit. So anyway. I find a spot, I mean, I'm from Vipassana, I don't give a shit where to sleep, pretty much. And I, I sleep over, and then nobody comes in in the morning, I, I message him and say, Raghavendra, my friend, I'm gonna pass, I mean, I'm gonna go see Delhi, I'm flying next uh, morning. So, yeah, I mean, thanks for the hospitality and shit like that. So I'm gonna bounce. Uh, he says, no, wait. I'm like, okay. And I'm a morning type of person, I, I need breakfast. If I don't eat breakfast, I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm gonna be angry as hell and stressed, and I'm, you may not gonna like me. So anyway, um, I'm trying to find food. Apparently, the, the fridge is not there, there's no food. So I go outside, and I was like, okay, maybe I can find something in the area. And there is nothing, pretty much. There's a road this way, a road that way, and there's, that's it. So I walk around for like an hour and a half, or two hours, or I don't know, no, maybe hour, an hour and a half, maybe next uh, tops, because it got hot, and I was like, okay, it's time to go back, so I came back, and, you know, he's not there, I was like, shit, I'm getting desperate here, I mean, dude, my day in Delhi is missing, and some shit, and, you know, I need to do something about it, and he said, yeah, yeah, I'll be there, I'm like, okay, <laughs> so he arrives, I'm like, really hungry, so he turns on his laptop, immediately turns on music, rolls a spliff, we hit it, and here it starts a long lifetime friendship. <laughs> because this is the moment that led me here, pretty much. Because if I haven't stayed, if I've bounced, if I've decided to just go, I wouldn't have ever met this guy. And, I mean, he's just a fucking superstar, I tell you. I mean, this guy is amazing. Like, dude, <laughs> kudos, I'm really pleased to meet you. So the thing is that, you know, um, what happens? 
so we then spend time then he introduces me to his mate joey and then our oh, dude's been working the way for 16 years but <laughs> just, a, just a star but yeah let's go back to ragavendra and uh, talk a bit about him uh, so that 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 guy is just like a visionary so he is into like growing hemp and, and stuff and it's been like a this idea of a gold rush lately with all the changes happening and decriminalization legalization in certain countries like thailand for instance and of course this western influence netflix doing a great job thank you guys how to change your mind is the fucking mwah, soundtrack of my time <laughs> psychedelics renaissance but yeah going back so <clears throat> the, everything that's happened uh again his dedication to this idea and desire to make the world a better place has led him to starting his own business. Five years ago or so, if I remember correctly, he went and just decided to do it. But <laughs> that is just simply amazing. I, I, I adore this guy. So yeah, um, going back to Kushi, this, this woman, she's been like extremely instrumental. Extremely. And I'm really deeply thankful to her for doing this because she mentioned that she comes from a very simple uh, family and simple family from lower kind of layers of society if you put it this way because i don't want to say those words that are being used as labels <laughs> i'm not gonna do it so it is by default her uh, kind of circumstances they're significantly different from typical Western world and I know it because I'm a person who was born in a fucking crossroad between Europe and Asia because Sverdlovsk is located right there so there is a border between fucking Europe and Asia near Sverdlovsk and this is the place where people when they have weddings they just come there to make the photo shooting you know like oh we're at this monument the border between Europe and Asia let's make pictures drink champagne and never come back here ever in our entire life and then you look at the border and on the left side you see this Europe very clean and neat and nice and you look at the right side like like I remember it I mean I have this in my mind I have this fucking picture in, deep there inside my head that once I looked right to the Asian side, it was just, you know, plastic uh, um, cups and bottles and everything, like, fuck, this is like exact border. <laughs> so, this, this is why I understand both Western world and Eastern world, because for me it's the double-faced side of my nature as a human being, as a one species, pretty much. And this is, this is how it works for me. And yeah, just to wrap up here real quick, because I don't know shit what to talk about next, because I need to tend to my business and I'm trying to enter European market with my business is fanatic and nobody fucking wants to work with Russians nowadays. And now I'm going there with my interior design studio. And then again, Russians are not that uh, interested, right? But why not do a fucking business between India and EU? I got a company, you know my contacts, get in touch with me, let's do shit. <laughs> Ooh, drop the mic. No, not